Hi everyone, let's go over my bullish and bearish elite wave scenario, some Bitcoin, starting with the bullish scenario where we are looking for a finished three wave corrective structure and now a five wave leading diagonal to the upside in a wave one, followed by preferably a deep and short corrective structure in a wave two, after which we want to see impulsive continuation in a wave three to continue the bigger trend. In this scenario, inside this wave 1, we then have 5 subwaves, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and all of these subwaves in this leading diagonal should be a 3 wave zigzag family structures, as your wave 1 here is then clearly counted as a 3 wave move, and then you want a 3 wave in 2, in 3, in 4, and also in 5. Now preferably in a leading diagonal your wave 3 is shorter than your wave 1. If price would move above the 1 to 1 here, the orange line at 68.5k, it reduces the probabilities for this leading contracting diagonal as then your wave 3 would be longer than your wave 1. It is, however, not an invalidation, it just affects the probabilities negatively. The bearish scenario is an unfinished three-wave corrective structure, after which we still expect continuation to the upside. In this scenario, we once again have an ABC here, making the low at 49k, but now it is labeled as a wave W. Then we have a three-wave corrective structure to the upside in a wave X. Now a wave X is most commonly a zigzag family structure like a zigzag or a double zigzag, which then is also the case over here. And then you look for a wave Y, which then is counted as a flat, a three-wave A, three-wave B and a five-wave C to the downside to take the low at 52K and then still continue the trend afterwards. Now your wave X here is however very very short in time if you take a FIP time from the start to the end of your wave W and you toggle on the 0 0.236 then you can see that your wave X finished way before the 0 0.236 FIP time which is very uncommon as preferably a wave X would finish even after the 0 0.382. However, wave X's can at times be very unpredictable. The most common structure in a wave X is a zigzag or a double zigzag, which also naturally can be relatively short in time. So therefore, one cannot like invalidate this scenario based on time. Now inside wave Y, we then look for a flat structure. Three wave A, three wave B, five wave C. In this scenario, the most common flat is an expanding flat, and an expanding flat wave B target would be the white box here, which is most common for B, 68k to 69.8k. Currently, we are ranging around this orange box here, which would be a target for a regular flat, A, B, C, but a regular flat is less common, and therefore, this orange target area has lower probabilities than price moving to the white area over here in this particular scenario, after which we then look for a wave C to the downside. Now you can see that I do have FIP times on my chart here in blue. These are taken from the start to the end of W to the end of wave X, comparing wave W with wave Y in time, and preferably your wave Y does finish after the 0 0.382 FIP time, sitting on the 19th of October 2024. After your wave Y, you then look for continuation to the upside. Now in both these structures I have covered now on the daily, both in this diagonal scenario as well as here in the WXY, this move to the upside is counted as a zigzag ABC, a three-way structure to the upside. So if we then zoom in to this move to the upside here, we then count a five-wave move to the upside in a wave A, a three-wave corrective structure down in a wave B and another five-wave move to the upside in a wave C. The most common target for your wave C is between the 1 and the 1.236 trend based FIB extension taken from the start to the end of A to the end of wave B, giving you a target between 65.4k and 67.4k. Also still a target for wave C is the 1.618, a little bit less common though at 70.5k, but if you do move that high, it is going to have a bigger effect on the daily time frame scenarios, because if you move up to 70.5, then of course you will hit this orange one-to-one -one of the diagonal at 68.5, lowering the probabilities for a diagonal. 
Now, if that happens, we do have to consider this move to the upside as an impulsive structure, which means that we count this as a wave one, two, one, two, three, four, looking for a wave five and therefore wave three to finish, then a range in a wave of four, and then another move to the upside in a wave five. Therefore, we then get an impulse to the upside. The invalidation here at the moment is sitting at 60.9k. And if we do count this move to the upside as an impulse, then on a daily time frame, we have to at least consider the potential of a double one two where we have a wave one two another one and then get another two and then continuation to the upside looking at these cvd divergences we were looking at this bullish cvd divergence for a long time with the target being 65k initially as price came down not too interesting but as price then grinded to the upside with continuous local bullish cvd divergences it increases the probabilities for this divergence to play out as mentioned before and now it finally did now as price is moving to the upside locally we need to wait for a new range to form to observe some local cvd divergences on let's say a 15 minute time frame at the moment it is still a little bit early to really analyze those time frames we are currently at resistance as you can see this blue box here between 66.3k and 66.5k and if price would pass this resistance then the next box here is at 68.1k to 68 8.4k and if we then look at the probabilities between the different scenarios then on the daily time frame the probabilities are higher for the bullish scenarios compared to any bearish bear market type of scenario and on the four hour time frame the probabilities between a zigzag and an impulse are actually quite neutral a zigzag would be an abc after which we look for a bigger retracement and in an impulse we're looking for one two three four five we're also in an impulse we are preferably looking for for a bit of a retracement a bit of a range but then we label this a wave four and still look for a five to the upside afterwards so it pretty much depends on the local range that is yet to form now it is weekend which commonly leads to sideways price action and from an elliott wave point of view it is always good to wait for a range to form after price is moving to either the up or the downside but of course at the moment to the upside because the moment a range is forming it will give us all the information that we need to get a very good idea of local probabilities to continue towards the upside or have a bit of a bigger move to the downside i hope that this video was helpful or available to you please check out the brand new complete elliott waves guide playlist i've made that shows you all you need to know about elliott waves thanks for watching and subscribing and i'd like to see you at the next one bye bye